since back end of 1999, um, we came across and we wound up with the Aita people, the tribal people, working with them. And have worked up in the mountains with the Aita for seven to eight years. The Aita are the indi indigenous people of the Philippines. They're the people who have been here since I don't know when. And they've been living up in the mountains. They were hardly known in this region until 1991 when Mount Pinatubo erupted. And these folks were living close to it and they fled down the mountain and surprised everybody that there were so many. Many were killed who were hiding in caves at the time and it caused a huge upset. But basically the people that we're working with uh, are from the mountain regions um, and they're dis displaced people who've been rehoused or well given a piece of land to live on and they make their own houses out of bamboo and thatch and live on a hunter-gatherer kind of style um, and in poverty mostly, almost all. Up in the mountains we were doing um, a feeding programme because there were so many children malnourished, um, livelihood projects for people to try and get them to stand on their own two feet when they've no money to do anything because they're in poverty, feeding programme and medical work and we set up a, a kinder class as well. Well we came uh, down the mountains from Canyon Iron and many of the Aita children followed us because they wanted a good education. Again the Lord led us um, to this piece of land where we are now which was the first piece of land we looked at we, to set up a school for um, the indigenous children and others as well but those in need and it was for the elementary level which really means from young children up to the age of 11 ordinarily but we have children up to 15, 16, even 17 years old just because any education is better than none. Um, so we found the land and on it was a little bungalow which was not really much use to us so we knocked it inside out made uh, three classrooms from it and built a kitchen on the back and then we started uh, three years back and with only the kinder level which is theoretically ages four and five um, and we had grade one which in UK is the same as year one and second year the second year of we've worked there we'd been working all the time doing building during that period and we'd bought more classrooms so then second year we extended and went right through the grades so now we have from kinder up to grade six or UK is year six. With the children at school we feed all of them every day it's a, a feeding program which is closely monitored we use World Health Organization tables we weigh and measure the children every month and found that during the beginning of the new school year when the children have been home that 25 percent are malnourished and it's a shocking statistic but they're coming in with rashes over the skin they're coming in with coughs and colds some are coming in with all, all sorts of stuff and basically it's nutrition based or lack of nutrition and for some of them it's the only uh, they will have coffee and maybe rice water or even rice if they're lucky, you know, for a breakfast or the evening meal. So we feed them every day, they get vitamins and minerals. They're severely malnourished, they get a breakfast as well as the lunchtime meal. And the purpose is simple, to feed the kids so they can learn. Because we found that when they're hungry, they can do nothing. Primary, the kids come to school to be fed. The education for these children is secondary. Um, in, an, in our naivety, we didn't realise that when we were setting up a school. It was just literally, we, you know, we thought we were going to educate them. But for them, the priority is the, the food. At the moment, we've almost finished making a, a piggery and a chicken rearing unit. So we feed them and the piggery and chicken rearing project is to support what we have already 
at the back of school we have a little bit of land, so we use that for uh, agriculture, for rice and other vegetable crops. That helps, but also we want some good protein as cheaply as we can, which is why we're doing the pigs we're going to rear, starting soon with maybe five, but we hope in due course that we can get more than that. Um, so more than meet our needs and hopefully may even bring a little bit of money into school if we can sell the meat. With the chickens, it's a, a 45 day rearing program. So we buy them as one day old and at 15 days we move them on to the next type of food, another 15 days the next type of food. So at 45 days they're, as, they're as, as mature as needs be and that's more protein for the kitchen. So that project is, is on its way to completion now. So hopefully within weeks, we'll have animals in there. We have 17 people working with us. Um, that's teachers, teachers aides, cooks, assistants, driver, maintenance, all this kind of a stuff. Um, for the building work, I've been working all the time with a, a group of builders so they've been doing the block work and cement work, generally speaking, um, and I've done the things I can do, which is welding, electrical, plumbing, and so forth. All of them are, are, are local that we use. We're the only foreigners on site. We're fortunate that we've got three ITAs um, on our staff. We've got the um, cook in the kitchen, helper in the kitchen, and one of the teachers. Uh, no, actually four, and the teacher's aide. So we're well blessed there. So we, in Cannon Iron, where we used to work up in the mountains, we, we set a church up there and everything came under the umbrella of the church because we want to bring people to Christ and know that it's not just us. We're just instruments, no more than that, just willing vessels. And we've got a church, obviously, where we are. And during the week, all the children have their own church service and then on Sunday it's a service open to all and during the week at school we also have a, a staff discipleship course which we're doing every week with them and normally every week there's also a child discipleship course so we aim totally at the children really in school time and some of them are actually bringing the message to their parents they're seeing a change in the children. And through discipleship courses, through church, through various other things, and a Christian education, which is what they're all getting, it's not a, an add-on, it's, it's, it's a, an integral part of everything we do. Through all of that, children are changing, parents are seeing the change, and even some of the young children are coming to accept the Lord. Learning the culture, which I don't believe we will ever learn completely, a little bit, bit at a time. Um, finding all sorts of things such as when somebody says yes, with a big smile, it can mean anything from yes, I certainly will do that, or dream on, you have no chance. Basic things like that. Um, bureaucracy is interesting. Um, so there's the, some, of the, some of the problems. We have um, two children with special needs, uh, one who is uh, a member of staff's ch child who finds it very, very hard to sit still and concentrate and he does need special attention and then there's another child who is very clever whose needs aren't being met within that class and we would like to bring in a Downs child, uh, a Knight of Downs child, he's eight years old and if he doesn't get help soon he won't uh, get help, full stop, it will be too late. And for that we need funding for a special needs teacher. In terms of prayer, one of the most important things is um, health. Because without that we can't do an awful lot. Health, strength, energy. Um, to really cope with the, the needs within the school for the the school and the church to grow, for the children to grow spiritually. Um, also, 
uh, for funding of course for the children and we have 24 children out of 154 sponsored so that says a lot you know that we need help in that line. Um, general prayer that the Lord's will will be done and, and that we're well aware of what he wants so that we can follow his will and if we can do that everything is well. <laughs>